can everybody see my screen? Yep. Yes. Cool. Um, so today, um, today is the first session of the first week, as was mentioned in the calendar. And uh, this is the first session and later after four hours after this session, you will have a first a serious workshop session, which will be about like really serious learning. Um, this session today, we had the self introduction uh, session and then this is, uh, uh, I will just uh, show this slide with June and introduce in general, give you a basics of what this workshop is about. Um, and we are happy that we have few students are already familiar with it. Um, and then I will uh, uh, kind of invite each unit master to come up and introduce their unit brief shortly. And then after that, we are going to have a short break around, uh, we'll see if, if how much time we left. Uh, we'll be around 15 to 30 minutes. And then we are going to uh, go through some of our previous work, uh, work from our workshop from, uh, uh, it has been around the accumulation of seven years of work. And we are going to kind of briefly go through them and introduce you what kind of work we have been doing. Um, so you can kind of understand where this workshop specifically for this year is situated. Um, yeah, and then I'm very looking forward to our, our first uh, real session. Um, this is uh, our, uh, this workshop is organized by uh, Social Algorithms Research Group. Uh, we, we just uh, freshly launched this research group this year. Uh, as this workshop is to be a, a trigger to boost this uh, kind of uh, Formal, for, formal formulation, official formulation of this uh, research group. And uh, we are very excited about this shift. Um, the, the original kind of research agenda has been shaped uh, in between uh, a team of people uh, and let's say friends uh, from AA graduates uh, and kind of uh, specialized in very different, distinct, two different uh, kind of uh, research agenda or design methodology. One is uh, basic. Uh, one is based on uh, the interest in social engagement approach. One, another one is uh, uh, really interested in computational methodology. And we have been using this uh, year um, annual kind of short intensive workshop to really kind of try out how these two agenda can be talking to each other. Uh, and we have been, uh, it has been quite valuable experiment for us. So it was always a kind of creative challenge for everybody because we never uh, have this kind of chance to really talk to different kinds of uh, approaches uh, when we are working as architects. Uh, so basically, uh, these are the people maybe will give you a good understanding just of course, we don't want to distinct uh, our uh, work like so so black and white. But you can see that how um, uh, Jun, Jin Seok, Jaewon, and Seung Ah was kind of really uh, focused and developed few years of research uh, regarding based on the social uh, engagement agenda and really interested in engaging with people talking to people in the real sites and tr trying to analyze the urban uh, uh, structure and social structures and programs uh, and uh, like very kind of uh, engage, engaging kind of design approaches they take. And another, on the other side, uh, myself and uh, Taesong and Han Chu has been uh, really interested in the ways to use computational tools and technologies and how that kind of changes the way we design uh, uh, our architecture and the world. Um, so this is a very experimental kind of series of workshops uh, to try to talk to these two different, very dis distinct uh, agendas to together. Uh, and there has been a history of it. Uh, we started off from 
a two years of uh, uh, workshop that has been just like free workshop, uh, just like for experimenting with uh, students at Yonsei University. Uh, and, and then we were kind of interested in this uh, and became more serious about it. And when uh, our program became a editing school, uh, one of the editing school program. And this year we uh, branched out from the umbrella of a, uh, AA uh, and formulated uh, as this uh, social algorithm research group. So we are independent, uh, not depending on any school. Uh, and this way uh, we are more free and also be enabled to also engage with a lot of different uh, parties and institutes. And we are, are very excited about this shift um, so, uh, as a historical background, wh while we were um, part of AAB Sync School, um, actually all of our uh, founding members are graduate from AA, uh, from different programs. Um, and it was quite nat uh, natural that we kind of uh, formulated our program into AAB Sync School, uh, which is one of the global kind of school uh, curriculum that has been uh, quite uh, quite well kind of uh, pursued in AF for a few years uh, until last year. Uh, it has been uh, very, it, it has to be in global schools. So uh, uh, it's kind of um, a expanded network uh, of AA. So each, each school is uh, remotely kind of developed and uh, uh, very diverse in terms of the, the approach and their agenda. And this has been just, uh, these are some snapshots of uh, different schools, for example, in Shanghai, Madrid, Jordan, uh, and a lot of like locations that you can see here. It has been very, very uh, live. Uh, and every year, uh, these group Global schools have been uh, gathered in AA back and uh, uh, kind of exchanged. Uh, all the directors of the visiting schools has been exchanging uh, the productivity productions of the of each school, and it has been a very lively kind of um, uh, experimental uh, uh, pedagogy and uh, curriculum method. And then as one of that uh, a kind of uh, program, uh, we, uh, has be, we have been uh, uh, kind of conducting our program as a distance school Seoul. Uh, this you can see some snapshots uh, and we have been always hosting at Yonsei University. If this was not a pandemic situation, probably we were sitting in Yonsei University today uh, and having the workshop over there in, in person. And typically we were conducting a very intensive nine to 10 days workshop uh, with a lot of public lectures and public programs uh, and visiting of sites. Um, and everybody was in one big room and working together. It has been a very lively kind of um, a productive and intensive uh, uh, experience, let's say. Um, and that's kind of a very much a spirit of how we were studying uh, when we were students. Um, so some snapshots of the public programs. Uh, we have also, um, for, for a few years of, of this, we are also live streaming our programs on Instagram. Uh, we had indoor tutorials and learnings and also outdoor kind of site visits and, and, uh, and uh, site analysis uh, and everything. Um, yeah, and uh, Ju will kind of uh, ex explain from here um, and how we shifted this year's program to, a, uh, to our social algorithms uh, phase two. Hi, thank you. Thank you for the uh, introduction about our history. <laughs> And then I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, from today. Basically, you, I mean, you are all uh, part of the social algorithm 7.0, uh, which is already seventh year. 
So um, as Susimin explained, um, uh, we have been, uh, 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 we've been doing the design work, intensive design workshops for years, and then trying to test the uh, agenda between the social and algorithmic design. And uh, we always love debating and discussing and then trying something new. So um, uh, if you uh, take this workshop as a, not just learning uh, a software, but learning something, uh, uh, a new way of thinking or experiment or ins inspiration, whatever you need, that would be great. Because what we learn from uh, AA is we never learn something learn a knowledge from the the professor only we, it was always a something some sort of a interaction and um very uh, uh, exciting sort of a uh, uh, exper uh, experience between the tutors and the students so i know uh, some of you are still undergraduate students or some from uh, master students or some already professional and we are also students and the professional as well. So I think we, on this uh, platform, I hope you can all enjoy all this um, sort of exciting discourse about the new uh, way of doing in architecture, let's say that. So, um, so I mean, I don't think, yeah, if you can just uh, show. So um, this year, this is kind of a phase two of a social algorithm. So because we experience a, a, a very weird uh, half year in 2020 from 2019, so we couldn't really uh, pass this issue go on. So we said, oh, maybe we should just uh, deal with that. So uh, with this pandemic era, we probably need to redefine the local territory, which means before that, um, if we wanted to have a design workshop, then we could have done that uh, offline. So we could we could do that in Seoul or we could do that in LA, wherever. But these days, people are trying to meet in Zoom or online. And then uh, people try to work at uh, home or from their, their own local area. So that actually defines the lo local uh, the, the size of the local or the, or the character of the local or the territory of the local differently. So we uh, started to question about this issue uh, 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 some months ago. So that's why we uh, got this, uh, we defined local territory in the pandemic era as a sort of our a subject for the uh, social algorithm workshop. So as you know, some, some unit may be uh, more into this issue, some slightly less into the issue, but we try to sort of uh, uh, touch down a little bit so that at least we can discuss all together at the end of this workshop. So um, we've introduced our social algorithm uh, uh, group people at the beginning. And because we, want, we also wanted to learn something more, we invited a very professional and a very uh, knowledgeable uh, uh, professionals who are Zhu Heng, Li, Namju, and Zhang Hyan, Uje, and Casey. So they're all based in uh, Seoul or LA or New York or, uh, or it's all very different. So we tried, we, we've done a lot of the meetings in, uh, uh, to, in, in Zoom, in online uh, 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 platform and try to make up a new sort of a curriculum so that we can enjoy this workshop with you guys. And we also invited a two uh, a tutors, Dongmyun and Taeyun. Uh, I hope you remember their, their introduction at the beginning. Um, so that in the, in the second week, uh, we can make more sort of a, a, a close uh, a relationship between uh, all, uh, all the teamwork within the units. So uh, if you pass to the next slide, yes, thank you. Um, this uh, uh, four or five invited lecturers will, uh, uh, will form a unit, each unit. So unit one is Zhu Heng, unit two, Namju and Jonghyun together, unit three, Uje, and unit four, Casey. And I think you all kind of uh, read through the brief of the each unit and then you've decided or you've sort of applied your first choice unit and second choice unit. And then with these lecturers, their own sort of their, uh, their uh, specific uh, softwares and the professionalism, 
we've uh, matched up our uh, existing social algorithm uh, research group members to form a, a group of uh, three or four uh, teaching uh, units. So um, I think I can just pass because the each unit uh, master will introduce more in detail. So um, this, this is a timetable, I think you all know, because we uh, just make sure that all this timetable is uh, in, in Korean time. And because you, I know from the uh, introduction, we are from Korea, LA, New York, Dubai, Mexico, and uh, where Indonesia or China. So it's quite a lot and it's quite exciting to see all on this space. So, but we had to find a sort of most adjustable <laughs> or most proper time for, uh, for all. So um, the morning session, in Korean morning session is from 11 to three for four hours. And then the evening session will be uh, from seven to 11 p.m. in Korean time. And uh, most of the morning session will be uh, uh, carried out by unit two and four. Uh, mainly because they are based in, in, uh, in LA and in New York. And the unit uh, one and three will run the workshop in the evening. So the first week will be this uh, two main sessions every day. So you will uh, learn mainly about how the software works and the concept of it, uh, how we can use it, etc., etc. And the second week, uh, you will work with your unit mates with, and your unit masters to apply this, uh, your learned software into something, to propose something or to, to, uh, to interpret something into something new. So the, from the first week, uh, uh, with the lectures, some units, I think most of the units will have the assignments so that we make sure that you understood correctly. So homework will be there. So by, uh, by the end of the first week, we hope you all kind of understand what you want to learn, at least the how it works and the concept of it. And the second week, um, there will be more specific tasks and then you will have more, uh, more opportunity to discuss with your, your unit mates and then the unit masters. Okay, so second week, I think the time wise, I'm not going to mention because the unit ma it's up to you all and the unit master. So, um, uh, but all I can say is it will be quite intensive. Um, otherwise, I think you can't enjoy it. <laughs> the more intensive, I think at the end of you, you can say that it was exciting and enjoyable. Um, anyway, all the information can be found on this uh, uh, social algorithm homepage and also from the uh, uh, Facebook and Instagram. We have the account in Facebook and Instagram. So if you want to uh, take photo or, or do something or post something, please hashtag us as well. So that would be great because we want to make as many friends as possible. Yeah. And oh, so this is a meeting room that we are in, I think. So all the public events and the first week will be the same room. So you can use the same link. And from the second, week because the, each unit will have this a different uh, 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 a meeting room so the each unit master will create uh, the meeting room I think you all have the link already so please follow that link on the second week and uh, there's also a Google Drive that you can uh, download all the necessary information from your unit masters and also we will ask you to uh, upload your assignments or your research results, et cetera, et cetera, into the Google Drive. So the main point is basically, it's not one way workshop. It's not a sort of a teaching software. I hope you all uh, understand that this is the very uh, interactive workshop. I know it's quite difficult because it's on online, so I could already see that probably half of you have already turned off your video and audio, but we experience already because as a, as a sort of a, in, in a teaching a staff in, in school, we already experienced the last semester that how uninteractive it was teaching online. So I hope that you appreciate this sort of a, um, atmosphere is that how it, the atmosphere is very important. So when the when the lecturer is giving a lecture to you all, please 
have your video and audio on if possible and then try to make a sound, try to respond. And I know a lot of the students actually uh, uh, are shy to say that I didn't get it or, you know, hang on a minute, et cetera, et cetera. But please, please stop the lecture if you don't understand because this is not a sort of recorded uh, a workshop. This is the interactive workshop. So please say something if you don't understand. But uh, all the tutors will appreciate your sort of participation. Okay. Uh, also, if you miss the, uh, if you happen to miss the lecture, then you can also find the uh, a recorded version in the uh, YouTube the, within the 24 hours. So we know uh, from the introduction, we miss a lot of the participants. That's because they are working in, in the office. I think it's, it's the office hour. So they said that they will probably see the uh, uh, recorded version. So you can also do that if you miss something or if you want to uh, review again, then you can also do that. So the, uh, on the screen, you can see the unit one, two, three, four, all the uh, lecturers and instructors and the workshop participants, you can see that. Uh, and the unit master's face and their email address. So if you have any specific questions to units, you can contact your unit master on the right hand side. Or if you go to the next slide, yeah. Sing Archer and Han Jin Kim is the main uh, contact if you have any question about the general uh, uh, entire workshop. And you can use the uh, 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 email address on the screen, info at socialalgorithms.com. Okay. Great, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. And now I will uh, kind of introduce each uni master to come up and introduce your grade. Uh, you can feel free to share your screen. So shall we go from uni one to four in a chronological order? So Taeyeon, if you are here. Yep, yeah, sure, ready to go. Great. So is my screen being shared properly? Do you see yeah. the full screen yeah. slide? Yeah. Okay. Um, so welcome to unit one. Uh, this will be, uh, your main lecturer will be Chu Heng Li, who is a researcher and he's uh, completed his doctorate in computer science at Postdoc as a computer graphics major and serves as a principal research scientist at the Human Robot Interaction Lab at the Intro Electronics and Telecommunications Research Institute, HETRI, in Korea. Uh, he has experimented in computational music as a hobby in college dorms, which led to him entering the computer graphics lab as a, at the graduate school. Uh, he has done research in theoretical foundation uh, in various fields such as graphic, uh, computer graphics, CAD, augmented virtual reality, computer vision, robotics, and artificial intelligence. Uh, more details will come from him later on. Just to share a few of his works, uh, this is the Great Line series, Machine Learned Patterns. Source is Gustav Klimt. This is the uh, Evolution of Disorder. This is a pixel stack series, source of uh, Raoul Duffy's Trente en Zola uh, from 1931. And here we see those paintings uh, by Raoul Duffy and Gustav Klimt, his, his pixel swap pink and gold series. These are the unit instructors for unit one. Daesung Lee is a Royal British Registered Architect, Artist, and Adjunct Professor at Yonsei University. Um, he has exhibited both in, uh, uh, in various places, including Korea, USA, and Europe. Uh, professor Park has studied at the AA and is a professor at Gyeongnam University who focuses on urban regeneration projects. He has completed numerous regeneration projects and master plans, including Wamol Social Housing Complex in Changwon and Jinha Regeneration Master Plan. He has exhibited in London and Seoul Architecture Biennale. 
Uh, this is myself. I'm an architectural designer at ACOM in London, UK. I'm in the R&D team. Uh, I specialize in computational design, machine learning and architecture, and I'm responsible for uh, any R&D uh, going on at the architecture department. The current focus is on generative algorithm for master plan and architecture, which I'm currently developing with uh, funding from the office. I've done my BR degree from Hongi Universities in Seoul, and I've uh, got my I got my master's degree from the Architectural Association School of Architecture DRO program. So um, throughout our workshop, we will contemplate the aspect of architecture that becomes more important as time goes on, our role as architect of systems. For this, we'll be using the Mathematica software, which was created by Stephen Wolfram, a computer scientist, physicist, programmer, and businessman. This is what the interface of Mathematica looks like, and it specializes in calculations of physics and mathematics. It is capable of a lot more, including machine learning, geometry processing, etc. Dr. Lee will show you how convenient this tool can be. It is a problem solving tool which does not require the heavy overhead preparations prior to actual coding. Mathematica can also be connected to Rhino and Grasshopper using RhinoLink, which has been published on GitHub by the Wolfram company. Mathematica has been used by many Nobel Prize laureates, including the theoretical physicist Frank Wilczek, Wolfgang Kettler, mathematician John Forbes Nash Jr., and recently in 2017, theoretical physicist Keith Thorne. Using Mathematica, we will visualize the unseen aspect of the urban environment, such as the example shown, which is displaying the heat map of the cap trips in Manhattan. We plan to adopt machine learning into our geospatial model. For the second week ongoing, we will start to look and contemplate about the role of architect as a system architect. Nicholas Negroponte, who is the founder of MIT Media Lab, had founded the Architecture Machine Group with Leon Grossier, which later becomes the Media Lab of MIT. Here you can see how they're testing the system of space, which constantly restructures itself with the interruptions by the gerbil inside the glass container. It is said that one of the gerbils leapt out of the container in frustration to its ever-changing environment. Here's another branch experiment of the same project. Seek was an experiment on machine vision. The goal was for the machine to come up with its own solution after a series of initial parameters and problems were given to it. Along with the previous works of Alan Turing, this would be the very beginning stage of what we call machine learning today. As we can see, this approach carried on in many aspects of the current media lab at MIT where we see experimental and analytical approach towards various subjects with technology. <clears throat> if we go further back in history, we have the Fun Palace concept by Cedric Price. He was one of the earliest visionaries who envisioned a system that could adapt and restructure itself according to the user's needs and wants. This has had great influences in architecture and computer science, Negro Ponti's works included. It is without doubt that this vision holds a lot of meaning in today's computational design field of architecture. Cedric Price has made this famous quote, which was the thesis of his conference in 1966. Technology is the answer, but what was the question? This question holds a lot of weight even today, if not more. As demonstrated by the history of the Media Lab, computer science and IT fields share a lot of history with architecture. One evidence is that we have the terms system architecture in those fields. Here, the architecture refers to the organization, the reasoning about the structures and behaviors of the system. This resemblance shares the same roots in history. Another perspective was presented in the movie Matrix Reloaded where it was the machines that constructed the system in order to control and farm the human bodies and minds. Here, the constructor of such system is referred to as the architect. Here, the architect explains to Neo about the history of his designs. 
The first system was perfect and flawless, but was denied by the humans and ended in failure. The architect, puzzled and sure that it was due to human beings' imperfections, designs the second system with inspirations from the varying grotesqueries of, sorry, grotesqueries of human nature, such as violence and impulse, but it also fails. Then the third system was designed, which satisfied 99% of subjects with the illusion of choice. Here we begin to wonder if having a choice within the system is a crucial matter and how it can be implemented within the systems that we design. Here I'd like to come back to the question posed by Cedric Price. We look forward to developing projects with you as system architects. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next. Unit two. Uh, unit two will be introduced by NJ Lee and Chu Hyun. Chong Hyun, sorry. You guys can see my screen? Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, I think I don't need to introduce myself to, to you guys because we already did it. And I am uh, my partner, Dr. Uh, Chong Hyun Wu. And Che and Song Min Han, we um, try to understand uh, our urban condition based on the network system analysis. Particularly, we have a theme in terms of the design production called COVID-19, sort of a new normal, um, an urbanism with a, with a fixed loop. So this diagram is basically describe what we prepared for in this workshop. The first one, we need to understand the theory and the equation and history of behind the scene of the network system, such as um, accessibility and centrality and things like that. Once we understand the, the theory and the equation behind the scene, we're going to make some of um, an exercise and experimentation within the tool called NNA tool, which is a um, um, numeric network. <laughs> Sorry, analysis tool we have been developed with Jung and Wu. Not only that, but also for, for those of you guys um, familiar with the Python code and other um, scripting language things, we can expand the tool up to more you know, the advanced way, particularly for who are interested in deploying this tool to you know, facilitate your research or um, analyzing the urban context things. As an outcome, uh, we expect not only just uh, meaningful, let's say, image or result as a, as a form of design, but also we can you know, uh, think about uh, some publication or peer review journal. Yeah. But right now, I have no idea. Uh, we can you know, see how far we can push. Just based on your interest and passion and direction, uh, we are happy to help. But I'm just mentioning the, what possibility we have right now. So most important thing is that the primary goal of this workshop is to understand you know, the network analysis. This is most important things, right? Because we are building with the network analysis tool. But also, um, we introduced NNA tool, which actually encapsulates and resolve a lot of mathematic you know, equation, which is a little bit complicated for you know, the beginner. So, um, but the tool actually uh, give us you know, some you know, confined way or limited way which is a guided way to you know, deploy the tool in the right way to analyze, you know, compare uh, urban context. And then uh, based on the people's, you know, how people you know, follow us, uh, based on the, because individual people has different learning curve. So we also have some, well, uh, to um, you know, uh, customize the data and in order to take advantage of the uh, NNA tool. So we have a two lecture series, as you guys know. The, the first lecture is more about um, understanding the theory and equation and history of uh, network analysis um, in, 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 in urban context. So Jong Yun, we're gonna introduce um, the tool and give us more additional information. Yeah, sure. Hi again. Well, um, the first lecture is about general 
knowledge of network analysis in transportation geography field. So uh, numeric network analysis toolbox, which we developed together with NJ and me, uh, it is um, evidence-based facial network analysis toolbox for Rhino Grasshopper. Uh, it is very useful tool for evaluate diverse scales, not only for urban scale, but also for architecture scale as well. Uh, so if you want to evaluate any kinds of networks uh, and locations in space, you can use it. Um, yeah, next. Yep, I did it. Yeah, well, yeah, we, we might talk more details about the theories and uh, fundamental knowledges later on on our lecture series and workshop, but I will briefly talk about two major concepts. The first one is centrality, which is the most important concept in understanding the hierarchy within a network. There are four things. Uh, each of them has a unique meaning that allow you uh, evaluate the importance of a location with a spatial network. Okay. Uh, second concept is accessibility analysis, uh, which reveals patterns of activities in city and connectivity in space. So you can determine which locations and distances are accessible uh, from your origin to the destination through the shortest route. So all this uh, analysis is all the evidence based. So you can actually can get the uh, numeric data as your results. So we can uh, use all these data results by using other statistical tool or even we can test through very basic kind of statistic uh, description through our NNA toolbox as well. So thank you for describe um, the first lecture. And the second lecture is um, uh, to take a look at the graph because the network system is basically the, um, out of the graph. Yeah. So um, lecture B, I'm going to talk about uh, the discrete urban space and connectivity. So particularly how to partition and connect them. So the graph is uh, one of the basic and you know, very fundamental a mathematic object in mathematician or computer scientist people. So graph is uh, basically, uh, you know, basically we're dealing with this data in a spatial environment because we are architectural design or landscape or urbanism, uh, urban, urban designers. So the graph is uh, give us a way to capture data in a space. Um, the image on the right, so this is the, the once we create the sort of uh, graphs connectivity and to capture this, uh, the, the, the data in urban context. So there's a lot of terms behind the scene. So the in image on the right is the, how to propagate the, in, uh, the individual um, the data from the origin to destination. When you create the prop propagation, um, we actually calculate a lot of uh, different types of uh, the metrics, such as, let's say, the viewability or amenity or sloughness or things like that. It's, it's fully up to us what kind of data that we wanted to process during the pro uh, for the propagation things. And also, you know, the graph has a very discrete stuff, right? So we have an individual points and then connectivity between, you know, nodes, right? But the, the voxel, uh, let's say, in a, in a different way is a pixel because pixel is basically to, uh, one scale like, you know, um, a data area. Uh, if you take a look at your uh, screen, uh, iPhone or screen, so basically this is the pixel. If you zoom in enough, so you can see one like a little scale. So Boxer is uh, the same concept, but it has uh, the other uh, dimension along the z-axis in a Cartesian coordinate system, for example. So it, it has uh, the other connectivity. So um, let's say, well, what if we have a different types of agent uh, mean on the network system? So we can lie on individual agent in a uh, the, the, uh, in, in a, let's say, layer. So it's not like this kind of a Z index, but it's more about like abstract way of Z index. So individual agent in the graph, they are talking to each other. So don't worry about it. We can, we can learn and um, uh, understand this throughout the workshop later. 
And also, this is another example how we, you know, capture the spatial information and processing and visualizing, and then enact the, the spatial information with people. And particularly, we have three different types of, um, let's say, exercise, which you can, you know, uh, expand it to your paper or your journal review um, um, idea, whatever. But most important thing is that we have a fixed rule, which becomes sort of a new normal in terms of urban connectivity and layout things. So we have a different types of um, the technology. I mean, which is uh, nothing special. It's more about like how we packing the circle or how we partitioning the area based on the distance or like uh, some t tolerance. So computation is a, the, I mean, the computer has a, a lot of, you know, um, it's really powerful com compared to the human being, right? So using the iterative process, we can compute um, the how, you know, the six, how people maintain the six feet between people, right? And then the interesting things on the right, in the image on the right, is that we also can deploy some agent, and the agent has their own sort of behavior based on their properties. And then um, as time goes by, they actually you know, become a giant like um, junk of um, area. So I mean, this is the, uh, there's two way of uh, applying this kind of um, agent based system on top of network analysis. So one is the, like before creating the network, we can actually simulating to extract some, some paths, let's say possible paths to build the network system. And the second way of, of around it, uh, doing around uh, applying the, the agent based system to network system is that uh, once we you know create the, the network we can we can actually tweak the network based on the weight so for example how we attract agent to, throughout the, this network or how we expose you know the, the agent throughout the network it's all about the, the, the tune the weight of the network so for example um, the image on the left so this is actually one of the, my uh, previous, um, let's say, um, project. At that time, my goal is to create uh, some evacuation plan, you know, so individual people, I, I mean, the, the individual flow, flow has the room, and the room has their own, like a uh, uh, maximum type of uh, maximum people in, in individual room. And then once the fires uh, start, people try to, you know, the, um, uh, try to find the shortest path, but keep in mind, we need to wait. We need to maintain the distance, right? Otherwise, uh, we need to wait. So in this context, maybe you can find the other, like, let's say, like a detour way to evacuate, right? So I mean, this is, this is the one of the example how we are deploying the um, agent system on top of the network system. And then uh, the other uh, image on the left uh, button, so I create a graph, yeah? The graph, as I said, it has a node and then the connectivity. And then once you uh, interact with the graph, they actually interact. You can you can drag drag or you can insert by clicking on mouse on the screen. And then there's a, like a black, let's say, uh, paint is drawn on the background, right? So this is all about like how we tracking the individual the node in a network can interact. So for example, uh, node one collide with like load five or 10 or things like that. So we basically create the connectivity of the data flow. So we can actually check in throughout the, the timeline, what, what caused the other, the other, let's say the result, it's like a chain effect. So thanks to the computational uh, power, you can uh, explicitly tracking and then deploy and then understanding the data flow in order to understand what's going on behind the scene in the network. So anyhow, so as time goes by, they have their own like a, optimal um, uh, put, uh, configuration, by the way. Uh, so um, also we have um, multiple, hey. yeah? Um, we, we've got a question on the chat room. Okay. Let me. My, my, you just uh, mentioned, that. what's the relationship between graph one and graph two? Can you please explain? What is graph one and graph two? Let me see the chat. I just wanted to clarify, um, like in, in your, that? yeah. Okay, so um, actually, actually, this is more about the layout problem. I think, by the way, thank you for pointing out. So this, um, the, the image is more about like once we populate the path, right? 
So now we have the path that the agent can follow, right? And then the agent can follow the in order, uh, and follow the path in order. But throughout the, uh, the travel of the individual the path, they need to maintain the uh, distance between agent. Yeah. This is the point that I want to make in this slide. The second thing is, there's a two different constraints. One constraint is the individual node can collide each other and then push each other. But at the same time, there is the, 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 the edge, right? Edge has their own length. Also, we need to maintain this length as well. So there are two different types of a goal in order to optimize the, of the position. Yeah. Is, is it right answer to your question? Yeah, I understood it. Thanks a lot yeah. for explaining. Yeah, I mean, the, um, this is more about like uh, the point out what we have been prepared. So as uh, uh, exercises goes on, so we can make a more like, uh, um, like a study or scenario, scenario behind the scene. And then based on the you guys' purpose or interest, we can assemble or disassemble possible technology. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then um, this is the example how we deploy the agent on top of the network system. So once we found the, uh, the like a uh, optimal path, this is actually union scale in Manhattan. And then inside of the park, we can we can explain or uh, you can uh, deploy the agent based on the rule, and then they actually create their own path, and then we can you know um, distill the path and then create a new 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 network that we can also analyze again. So this is like a more like an iterative, iterative, iterative process. It's more about like how you design your strategy to govern the, the site using the network analysis system. Okay, uh, this is sort of my, our last slide. Uh, so as you can see, the letter two color is the, it's nothing special compared to the, 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 the schedule in the social algorithm website. So, but I think, um, it's a, let's say it's almost impossible to catch up all the you know workshop and lecture series within two um, I mean only two uh, lecture series. So um, I discussed about this problem with other uh, uh, people with Dr. Jung Yun Woo and other the uh, and we decided to uh, make a one additional, this is actually optional things, right? So additional uh, one hour, every day, one hour, let's say troubleshooting time. So um, uh, starting from nine, from 19 to 27, so individual, uh, the, the, every day we're gonna open a meeting starting from the nine to uh, you know, push your exercise or a hypothesis for your final project. And also possibly you guys can have some trouble shooting for the Python or uh, some you know, problem um, in terms of using NNA tool that we provided with you guys. So, I mean, this is the, let's say, um, schedule within additional small chunk of work workshop to you guys. That's it, thank you. If you guys have any question, please let us know and then we can answer you guys' question. Yeah. Thank you very much. Unit three. Yep. Thank you. Um, additionally, I will make a breakup room for the after this session um, before for the uh, break time. So I mentioned that we are going to have some break time, and I think we are uh, kind of uh, on time. So. I think I will make a breakout room for each unit. So if you are happy to meet your uh, team members already, you can uh, meet in that group chat. Otherwise, yeah, it's up to you, but uh, I, will, I will do that for the break, break time. Uh, yeah, thank you, Hanjun. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah, we are Unit 3. Our title is Socially Attuned Network, Agent and Attractor. Our main lecturer is Uje Song, and unit instructors are Jun Song and myself. And Uje Song is not here, but yeah, he's a founder of and founder and director of SAPMBA, heavily utilizing digital techniques in architecture and design. 
He's a res registered architect in New York, where he completed his master's degree from Cornell University. He is renowned as parametric design and currently teaching in Korea University in Seoul. Well, Jun Sung and myself, we already introduced ourselves, so yeah, I can skip this part. Yeah, so let's start with your agent system. Now you are seeing a mammalization of starlings. The birds spin, dance, generate patterns. But how do the birds accomplish this? By creating a computer model of a complex system like this, we can understand what is the mechanism behind. We will figure out how simple rules the birds are adapting. The flocking system is a part of agent system. The agent system has various types of behaviors. From this simple grid to the complex map like this, the agent could only follow the even path and navigate, or it could be the crowd simulation. In this, in this simulation, there are also certain points that uh, affect agent, which could be a kind of attractor. When you look at the city and flow of the pedestrians, you also can find uh, similar patterns like the agent system. Some of them are moving toward a certain point like commuters. In spite of this, some of them are just strolling and wandering while stepping in where they feel attractive. Moreover, uh, there are a number of social figures which can affect people's flow. It can be another, plan another path or it also can be another amusing location like this. In this way, we can think about uh, linking agent systems with people and social figures. So yeah, for instance, uh, we, can people, we can refer to people as an agent and social figures as attractors, since the behavior of the agents are mainly affected by attractors. Then, what can be a more specific figure? figure? In South Korea, there is a unique job, Miss, uh, Mrs. Yakrut, Yakrut Ajma. They have their own personal territory for marketing, which are strictly distri distributed by company. And they are not only selling and develop, uh, delivering yogurts, also they become uh, the lodgement of neighbors socializing. So now, yeah, you can listen to yeah what they are saying. On the other hand, uh, 24 hours convenience stores in Korea are also common places for socializing in approximate territory since they are located on every single block and some of them provide uh, tables as well. So our unit uh, will look into the data of uh, these social figures which can be made of, which can be referenced to mobile attractors and static attractors and use their location and path data, path data to understand the agent system. We will mainly use Rhino for setting up and Grasshopper C sharp scripting for investigating behaviors and vectors. And to research, uh, research an agent and attractors deeply, we also can add some various types of agent behaviors to uh, compare information. Yeah, this will be yeah, your first week of the work. And after understanding this, we can find your own agents and attractors to research how data influences each other. While you are developing your own project in the second week, uh, you will figure out what problems are in the site as well as how you can execute from the simulation. And it can be the optimization of the location or visualization of the research or also can be some street furniture design. So, and all I mentioned in this brief is also in the our website, which is exactly the same as this uh, text. So you also can have a look again. Yeah, thank you for listening. Is there any questions so far? 
Thank you very much. That was very clear. Unit four. Can you? Can you see my screen? <clears throat> yes. No? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Dong Yuki, who is instructor. Uh, I'll show you a brief introduction to Unit 4, the name Individual City, Utopia. So, before we start, I want to talk about the principle of the algorithm. And as you can see in the diagram, if you put any input, it goes through a series of calculations by the algorithm, and the result will be output. The process that we cover follows this principle in a large context. So let's, let's look at an example. There's a box with an algorithm of plus one. So if you put one as an input, you can get two as an output. So everyone already knows it. So the workflow we will look at is a bit complex, but it follows this approach too. So unit four, we'll work on the project with two major techniques. So the first, the first technique is called style gen. So let's uh, look at... Is it yeah. only me that I think I'm, I'm looking at the screen which is a little bit cut? Is it yeah. yeah, it's a bit cut. Huh? Uh, I think uh, trimmed uh, on the left. The portion of your display is different. Ah. Uh, yeah, it looks a bit zoomed in. Just, can you see it full screen? Yeah. Oh, can you, can you make it PDF? Ah, uh, yeah. Do <laughs> you oh. uh, have video in the PPT? Okay, mm -hmm. you can. We, we can do that like this, yeah. Yeah, full screen again. Yeah, sorry. So. <laughs> So you need four. four. Yeah, yeah. Now it's no, good. No, it's now good. good. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> yeah, something cool. wrong. <laughs> yeah. So you need four. We'll work on the project with two major techniques. The first, the first technique is called style gen. So let's look at the algorithm box first. So more than thousand images are collected using a Python script that automatically collects images through hashtags or geolocation, and then train AI with the collected images. So train, train AI in this way creates its own style based on the images collected from Flickr and transform the input images into its own style images. So therefore, in style gen process, AI refers to changing the input photos that you take into AI train style. So let's look at an example. So I train AI with images from Flickr's hashtag church, church. Then AI can transform images into church style. And as an input, I put a building facade image taken near my house and AI transforms my image into a church style based on the train data. So the image right below is made in Photoshop for better understanding, so please focus on understanding the overall workflow. So this is style gen we will learn as the first technique. And the second technique to learn is cycle gen. And let's look at the algorithm box as well. So what's different from the style gen is that it trains AI with photos taken by myself rather than collecting images using Flickr. So AI, AI finds common things among the photos and using them, AI creates their own style. So like StyleGen, it transforms the input images into a trained style output image. So also let's, let's look at an example too. So I take pictures of several buildings in Soho, Manhattan, and train the AI with it. So, AI runs Soho style and can make the input image Soho style image. So as input, I put an image of a building facade 
that I took in Korea. So AI transforms my input image into Zoho style based on the trend data. So these two techniques I have mentioned play a role of transforming the input images into different images. But what if I want to make them 3D, like 3D model? So here's a technique called photogrammetry. So the photogrammetry is the technique that allows us, allows us to create 3D models for real objects from photos. By taking photos of the object from these different perspectives, the specialized software is able to find representative or characteristic points of the model that are, that are repeated in all the photos. Therefore, the basic goal of our unit is to make a 3D model by several images from AI. So, actually, I introduced like these two techniques named Stylogen and Cyclogen. So, our uni students make some um, two two members team. So, we, we, we are gonna have uh, four different teams. So, one member will handle the Stylogen and the other one handle the Cyclogen. So, ideally, I hope they will make some the combined, they, they will find some the combined the moment or some uh, something. So let's look at what will happen. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cool. Uh, yeah, uh, all the tutors made a lot of effort preparing the introduction to be as clear as possible. But of course, it's uh, almost everything is quite new to everybody, including us tutors. Um, and yeah, I think you will kind of understand it throughout the workshop. So I, I'm sure if things are not clear at this moment, it's not a strange thing. Um, it's pretty normal. Uh, you, you, you don't have to understand every single thing. Uh, but in order to uh, just maybe to see if you have more like personal questions or specific questions. I will now break you break this group into four different groups and uh, have a so you can have a chance to meet your own tutors uh, more privately. 